communication is uh, quite a young science, but it has uh, branched out in its uh, short life. And uh, if you are a communication student uh, taking a general education communication course, chances are you will not be discussing uh, the so-called uh, sub-discourses on communication. And this is what I'd like to talk about uh, today. Uh, the title of this talk is C4D, or uh, Communication for Development, or Alternative Communication Perspectives. And uh, my name is Alexander Flor, and I'm from the UP Open University. Now, uh, this talk would look at these uh, so-called sub-discourses from an academic lens. Uh, I come from the UP Open University. As you know, it is the fifth campus of the University of the Philippine System. 100% uh, of our programs and courses are offered online. Uh, and uh, specifically, I come from the Faculty of Information and Communication Studies. But I also spent uh, 25 years of my academic life as uh, a professor at the UPLB College of Development Communication. And uh, the UPLB College of Development Communication is the birthplace of uh, development communication as an academic uh, program. I, I would say that C4D, or Communication for Development, is actually based on the early work at the uh, uh, College of Development Communication. And uh, the C4D uh, discourse is based on the narrative that uh, one can grow, one can develop through communication. Uh, as uh, students of communication arts, uh, we are taught that uh, communication is for expression, right? It enables us to uh, express our ideas and to understand the ideas of others. So it has uh, a social function. But uh, development communication would go beyond that, actually. Okay? Uh, development communication content began, began with agricultural focus, but now, surprisingly, it encompasses economic, social, environmental, and even spiritual uh, aspects. Okay. And uh, I also tend to look at this from a practitioner's uh, lens or uh, point of view. You see, I have been involved in a number of uh, projects since the 70s, initially we called uh, C4D or Communication for Development as Development Support Communication, uh, IEC or Information Education and Communication, uh, and then uh, we started calling it Social Marketing. It was based on the idea that uh, if one could sell soap, one could also sell uh, socially beneficial ideas. Uh, and this evolved into what uh, we call social mobilization, where we uh, would mobilize communities to, um, for a specific event, for instance. We also went into environmental communication, transformational communication. Uh, quite recently, around 15 years ago, ICT4D, or Information, Communication, Technologies for Development, and lately KM4D, or Knowledge Management for Development. Now, uh, how did C4D evolve? Communication for Development, how did it evolve? Uh, uh, what, what you're seeing right now is, uh, uh, it's actually a, a book that was published by the UP Open University in 2007 called uh, Development Communication uh, Praxis. That book contains chapters that would represent some of the thoughts behind how C4D evolved. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, well, at the very beginning, uh, communication was uh, thought of as, uh, you know, um, um, it's, uh, it is to be used for expression. And this, is, uh, uh, this could be traced back to the days of Aristotle with his treatise on rhetoric. And uh, then, uh, during the Second World War in particular, people talked about communication for persuasion uh, as a means for propaganda. And then communication for information dissemination, communication for education, communication for development. Okay? And lastly, communication for social change. Uh, this is uh, this last phrase communication for social uh, change is the brief definition of development communication as forwarded by Dr. Nora Cabral who uh, established uh, DEVCOM as an academic discipline okay. now uh, I would like to talk about transformational communication and uh, I will be referring to this volume also published by uh, the UP Open University in 2004, uh, which contains a chapter on transformational communication. You see, earlier C4D uh, projects used a behavioral approach. You know, uh, we use communication for individual and social transformation. It deviated from the behavioral approach uh, when one focuses on values, norms, that determine behaviors, okay, then what you, will, what you are doing is transformational in nature. It is not merely behavioral. Also, there is the systems view that uh, every Every system, uh, every organism, every living system uh, has communication as its uh, critical function. You know, uh, every living thing has to perform three critical functions according to systems theorists. First is that uh, living things or living systems exchange materials with other living systems and with its, uh, its environment. Uh, they also exchange energy and they exchange information. If they do not perform any of these critical functions, then they expire, they die. You know? So uh, the exchange of information is uh, communication. It's nothing more than communication. So uh, we could say that uh, communication is essential for any living organism to survive uh, any system. It could be a social system uh, uh, to survive, or it could even be an ecosystem. Now, uh, much of this has been uh, contained in that book, Environmental Communication. And uh, if you would like to download it, then you could just visit my uh, uh, webpage at www.researchgate.com and uh, it could be downloaded. I would also like to talk about uh, so-called future states. Okay? With this, I, I need to refer to uh, a science called cybernetics. Now, uh, you would be familiar with this uh, in the popular sense in terms of cyber cafes or uh, cyborgs or uh, so on. But cybernetics is actually the science of control. It comes from the Greek word kuber, meaning helmsman or uh, pilot. And uh, it was um, proposed by uh, a mathematician. His name is Norbert Wiener who uh, did a lot of research during the Second World War on guided missiles. And uh, he used many of his principles on cybernetics in this manner. Okay, so it is the science of control. Uh, I would 
define it as, or I would describe it as the branch of general systems theory that deals with uh, communication. Okay, uh, the the basic uh, assumption of cybernetics is there. There there is a tendency in the entire universe. There is a tendency uh, which is called uh, entropy, a tendency for all things to decay, uh, a tendency for all living systems to become disorganized. Uh, this is uh, the reason why we grow old, why my hair would turn white, you know, why we eventually will have wrinkles while food rots. Uh, entropy is a natural tendency for chaos or for disorganization. Now, the same scientist, Norbert uh, Wiener, said that the only way that you could counter entropy is through the exchange of information, okay? Uh, this tendency for all things to decay. And so, uh, consider, for instance, that uh, we, there is one organism or a system, uh, a living system called uh, system X and its ideal state, it has an ideal state and it is working towards that ideal state, it will deviate from this path because of entropy, see? And uh, so uh, by th this we could deduce that uh, communication is necessary for us to uh, develop, to grow, uh, to evolve. Convergence and the ideal state, well, as, as we said, information counters entropy, and that's why information is also termed negentropy or negative entropy. So systems at all levels, whether these uh, organisms, ecosystems, social systems, can reach its ideal state at the shortest amount of time by reducing entropy, and how do we? How does one reduce entropy? We reduce it, we decrease it with communication. Recently, there has been uh, much talk about uh, digital uh, media, new media, uh, the information age, and uh, so on, and so forth. Now, uh, you may want to read uh, this. Uh, work which was written in 1986 called The Information Rich and the Information Poor, Two Faces of the Information Age in a Developing Country, and I'll, uh, it is downloadable. You see, there is a social promise of, of information and communications technology, you know, uh, which uh, would, would um, uh, bring uh, digital natives into for uh, the use of social media, for instance, tapping networking synergies and so on. There is also a study on social capital and the network effect. See how uh, networks increase uh, the social capital. This was as early as 2004. Um, and uh, a paper on ICT uh, and poverty, the indisputable link, uh, written in 2005. Uh, these are found in this book, Developing Societies in the Information Age, A Critical Perspective, which was uh, published by UPOU in 2009. If you, you would want to have a copy, you may download it at www.academia.edu. Okay, lastly, uh, this is a book uh, also published by UPOU in 2002. Uh, the title is Introduction to Development Communication and uh, it lays out the basic foundations for C4D or Communication for Development. Uh, it has, uh, well, it, the, the book begins with uh, different perspectives on poverty and underdevelopment. That poverty may be caused by uh, technological issues or uh, the lack of economic policies, uh, structural issues. Uh, uh, society is uh, structurally um, 
uh, compromised, uh, maybe poverty is caused by poor values. Uh, and um, it begins with this statement, like many fathers, I see in the eyes of every child I meet, the eyes of my children and uh, how poverty affects them. Okay, so uh, if you go into a field called, uh, uh, such as development communication, you start with children. Uh, postscript, the holy grail to uh, a development communication uh, practitioner is to design a communication strategy, procedure, or technique that would uh, make a socially beneficial message assume a life of its own, uh, meaning to spread on its own uh, without, without uh, any fanfare, any promotion, any uh, advertising gimmick, so to speak. How can a socially beneficial idea spread like wildf wildfire? Okay. Uh, I'd like to refer you to a science called mimetics. Uh, the, 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 the word meme is one of the more popular words in social media nowadays, but what is a meme actually? What is a meme? The, the word meme was coined by uh, uh, a UK scientist, uh, Dr. Richard Dawkins, in the 1970s to uh, refer to the basic unit of culture. Okay. Now, uh, in your course in communication, uh, your teacher would say that the basic unit of uh, sound would be a phoneme. The, the basic unit of movement is a keen. The basic uh, unit of um, uh, the characteristic of a living organism is found in a gene. Okay. Now, the basic unit of culture is a meme. It's the very basic idea that would transfer from one mind to another. And according to uh, Richard Dawkins, some memes have uh, the nature or assume the nature of a virus. You know, it spreads on its own. Uh, how can we make a socially beneficial idea into a meme and make it infect the entire planet, so to speak, uh, form a critical mass? Okay, how is this done? This is what we would like to achieve in the science of uh, development communication. So our primary ambition is really to render the field redundant, to render the field of development communication redundant. Now, uh, if you would like to refer or read more about these, please uh, follow these links at ResearchGate. You know, uh, the papers are downloadable here, uh, also at academia.edu and uh, linkedin.com uh, where you would find uh, uh, a number of blogs regarding development communication, environmental communication, as well as others. Thank you.